All right, today let's look at doing a uh, metal cutting simulation using SPG inside Alasteiner. Um, so the basic simulation essentially looks like this, right? So I have a cutting operation uh, that, that happened pretty quickly. So you can sort of see it cuts through the part, but you can sort of see the particle that exists as opposed to just elements. Uh, SPG is very uh, useful for modeling high deformation problem, but also includes material failure. Uh, and you can sort of see, and this is a, a simulation that involves like the full, uh, let me make the speed a little bit faster. And there's a simulation that involves the cutting uh, of, the, of the, the, the metal part, as you can sort of see progressively go through it. This is a higher frame one that I just made. Okay, now let's look at uh, the basic uh, topics today, right? Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to do a quick demonstration first, basically just walk through the steps of how to set one thing, set something like this up. And then I'm going to review the, the basic concept behind SVG, uh, how it works. And then we're going to look at a specific key card, which is uh, the section style SVG card, which essentially governs the behavior of, of uh, this type of analysis. Okay. All right. Let's look at, uh, so we're, we're gonna, what we have essentially that looks like something like this, right? This is basically the, the, the model that we're going to be working with. Now, if we open up the trees and look at it, you know, there's nothing here yet. Uh, first thing I always do is I, I suppress this body interaction because this is a single surface content I don't need. Uh, what I like to do here is that, you know, this is the cutter. Uh, this is the base. And then this right here is the metal part that I'm, I'm cutting, right? And what I want to do here is that these two material assignments are good. Uh, this one, I'm going to use a a aluminum material with a Johnson Cook material model that I found basically from one of the, the Alice Dyna example models that I found online uh, in the Dynamo website. Uh, this is basically, if you look at the density and the modulus, right, it's, I think it's pretty much an aluminum material um, or something similar to that. And then the equation of state for good uh, I basically copied from the example problem they provided just so I can have something relatively realistic to, to model in my example as well. Right, and these combinations are necessary because we want to model high deformation that includes material failure, right? So we need these uh, DU and the T5 damage parameter as well as the small method that sort of defines what happens once the, the, the element, quote unquote, the particle has separated far enough that it will fail, right? The equation state basically governs the bulk, bulk, bulk response of the, the material, which we also need for high deformation problems. Okay, now. Uh, before we go any any further, right? What we're gonna do? Let's go ahead and just match this part first, right? So what we're gonna what we wanna do here is to uh, make sure our units is MKS, which I believe it is, right? And then let's set this thing to 1.45 equal negative two meter. That's our global mesh. For uh, the first thing we wanna do here, we wanna mesh this part. Now remember, this is still in the Lagrangian frame of reference instead of using particles, right? I'm not using particles here. I'm using Lagrangian frame of reference because that's what really what SBG does, right? They're treating the mesh as the frame but what actually defines the behavior is the nodes itself right so what we want to do first is let's set this to uh i think it's 7.5 to negative 4 if i remember correctly right so 7.5 to negative 4 uh, meter that's for the body uh for the cutter uh what we want to do here is oh before i do that let's go ahead and set an edge sizing on the on the part because what i want to do here is that to make sure i have a very smooth brick mesh now, SPG only uh, works for four, six, and eight noded elements, which means if you want to do a 3D analysis, you have to do with an eight noded brick. Any other element does not work, right? We, that's also why we're going to change this to linear, to make sure we match this with a linear element. And the last thing we want to do here is that let's go ahead and set a uh, set a sizing uh, for the entire cutter body. And I'm going to set this to, uh, what was the number I want to use? That? It's 2.54. Uh, e to the negative three uh, meter, right? Let's go ahead and match this. Okay, so what this will do is that it will basically generate a very dense mesh across here. Uh, the reason I want this is right because I want a really good particle sizing, uh, a particle uh, density across this part, which upon which I'm going to make the, to do the cutting, right? Uh, so this is why, and this, this, these are all brick mesh uh, this cutter is going to interact with. Now, I need to define the interaction between this cutter and this part. So the way we do that is I want to generate a node to surface contact because what we're doing here is we're, we're basically interacting with the nodes as opposed to with the elements, right? With, it, with sort of like the, the, the segments. So what we want to do here is let's go ahead and generate a name selection. Uh, I want to call this, uh, oops, sorry. I want to call this uh, body metal. 
right? That's where this is. I'm not what I'm gonna call this the body cutter. And then the body metal, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna convert it to a nodal name selection. Now this nodal name selection uh, is going to contain all the nodes that's inside here. And what I want to do with that is that I want to create a a node to surface contact by selecting the nodes here and by selecting the body of the cutter here, right? And this allows us to create a nodal a, a uh, contact automatic node to surface contact contact pair, and that's going to basically have them interacting with each other correctly. Okay, pretty simple, right? That's really all I have to do. Right? Everything else is a is a standard explicit analysis setup. I'm gonna do 0 0.1 second time duration. I'm gonna set this unit to MKS, right? Yeah, because MKS is units of my material key card. And then I'm gonna let's let's do something real quick for the basic support. I'm gonna support this part on the bottom so it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna apply a velocity boundary condition to this piece. Uh, now, what I want to do with the velocity boundary condition is using a trapezoid profile, right? It's a, it's a standard technique with uh, it, with explicit analysis. Uh, what, what makes it useful is that it essentially gives you constant acceleration for the majority of the problem, and that creates stability in the analysis, right? So basically, this thing is going to move by this velocity uh, uh, for 0 0.1 second. And if you if you measure that, you, you basically get the distance of from here all the way to here. And that's how I got the 1.27 from, right? So, I mean, there's not a lot of point in diving deep, deep, but I mean, you know, there's an area under the curve is how much we're essentially displacing, uh, basically, is what, what, what we're looking at, right? Okay, now, if we keep going, right, the most important thing we want to do for an SBG analysis is to define the section card. Now, if we look at the section card for this piece, right, uh, I want to turn that instead of using an FEM method, when I use an SBG. Now, with SBG, these parameters are extremely critical for the behavior of of this part under under the cutting load, right? So what I want to do here is let's go ahead and just adjust the, the, the default value a little bit. And these values are based on both the documentation as some as well as some literature that I've found. Right? The kernel function what I want to do here is I want to use the the, the qubit kernel functions. And then with the, the smoothing scheme, I'm going to use the pseudo Lagrange. And then these 1.5 value are based on these default these value I'm choosing here. The time for displacement smoothing I'm gonna I'm gonna do third uh, do 30. Um, and then the bound filler mechanism, I'm going to do effective plastic string and change it to 40%, which is what 0 0.4 is is doing, 0 0.4. I uh, want to leave this uh, number alone. And then the option for civilization, I'm going to change it to simplify fluid, uh, fluid, uh, uh, fluid uh, approximations and self-contact. I'm going to set it to no. Now, all of these right here, I'm going to explain very briefly in the keyword, but, but they're all essentially part of the section installer SPG card. Um, so, which is why, well, as we look at the, the relative different kernel functions, we look at the density of the particles, right? It really changes the behavior, and there are right value for you for, to use for different kind of physics of the problem, right? So we really want to study the, the the theory and the documentation, make sure we're using the right value. But the basic setup, basic workflow, is uh, is what I'm trying to demonstrate uh, in this video. Okay. Now, with this kind of problem, what we really wanted to do is to make sure we're turning off default control cards. And default database cards. Now, I talk a lot about this in the past. I actually have a video where I talk about, you know, writing on your own default cards, right? So in this case, I'm actually going to use uh, what I recommend, <laughs> right? I'm going to write out two keyword files. One is called a default control, and then right is called a default uh, database. And then, you know, if you know about my work, right? My my video, I have a default default control card, default database card, which I'm going to copy over. To, to this problem and make some slight modifications, right? So for the database card, this is what I'm copying over. Uh, and then I'm gonna change this. This is uh, about five to negative four, should be enough. And then for the default control cards, I'm gonna use these right here. And the reason these exist is because I don't wanna use all the control, default control cards that's, that exist for this kind of problem, especially things like hourglass control and then the, 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 the bulk of viscosity type of control that's sort of written out. In the default control cards, right? Well, what I use is just these cards. We don't want to use the ones that we don't really care about, and that's why it's really important to make sure we're using the right cards. Okay. All right. That's pretty much everything. Let's look at what we did. All right. We'll have a cutter that's going to cut the metal material. The metal material is a default with a JC and EOS combination. Uh, we're defining a contact between the metal part and the nodes on the metal part. We do the metal cutter part and then the nodes on the metal part after we meshed it, right? And that that allows the, the, the metal piece to cut into the, the cutter to cut into the metal piece. Uh, for the actual problem with the duration of the physical phenomenon 0 0.1 second, uh, and then when I said unit to MKS, and we turn off the default control cards and default database cards, okay? 
And then uh, fixed support on the bottom, uh, velocity profile for the cutter, which is going to cut into the piece. We have a section saw the SPG, which is critical for defining the behavior of the SPG formulations. Right, and then uh, we have our default control, and default database card, which is going to define the behavior of our outputs and what kind of stuff we're looking at. And that right there sort of summarizes the entire setup. And if you look at the simulations, right, you can sort of see at about let me go, let me go back at about 0 0.4 uh, effective plastic strain, you have you have essentially a progression of damage where the particle will separate between the neighbors, right, and then you, you essentially have something that look like this. And that's why it sort of makes sense to to to, to have it look have it uh, uh, have plastic string uh, display as such. And if you look at the actual way that it just cuts, that was really fast. I mean, let me turn. We just do this, right? So you can sort of see this gives a relatively good behavior. Now I can still see there's some particle right here. The behavior looks fishy, right? That means that my my model is still slightly off. I want to do some further investigations into this kind of problem. Um, now with something like this, right? You know, let's look at the the basic behavior. The reason SPG works, right, is that you want to use it with this section card and with this element formulations. And then what? What this only again? This only works with four, six, no, eight noted solid elements, right? And SPG is a is a method to model severe deformation and failure, whereas EFG element free galerkin is a way to model severe deformation only. Um, and SPG does not require background mesh, where EFG does. I might make a video about EFG later. Right, but SPG is, in my, in my opinion, much more useful because in any problem where we have severe deformations, usually we have to also consider material failure, which is why SPG is a very useful way. But if you look at the EFG and SPG comparison in the cards, right, their behavior is very similar in terms of the setting you have to do, the type of set option you have in the in the control cards. Now, the nature of the particle-based method is that you're essentially solving these uh, 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 hydrodynamics uh, properties, right, in the model. Uh, and then each particle is going to have its own mass and momentum and hydrodynamic property that we might want to solve. And that's how the problem itself is being formulated, right? Whereas in final element, we're looking at things like shape functions. In here, we're looking at the, these characteristics on the, at, the no, at the nodal level. Um, and there's a lot more to learn about this, right? But I want to put this information together as the very high level view of how SPG works. Now, and then the most critical thing, of course, is the section solid SPG card, right? These two parameters, I splat and kernel, defines the kernel function and the smoothing function that's used to define the damage deformation gradient of your, of your SPG particles. These parameters right here uh, are basically, you know, are based on the value of the kernel that you want to use. DX, DY, DZ has, has these default values that you might, you might want to follow. Over here, I found some literature where we talk about the different kind of uh, 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 DX, DY, DZ value we might want to use for different kind of material, right? Because they're really material dependent. It's very critical for us to understand what we're trying to model, then we can correctly select these numbers. And if you look at the, the other parameter, these are really related to things like stabilizations. Uh, and it's also also very much related to the type of kernel function that we're using, right? So the most important thing to understand about particle method is in fact the kernel functions and the smoothing function that we're using. Does apply to both SPG and SPH? And that changes given the, the physics of the problem. So I think in, in reality, in practice, this requires a lot of more trial and error to make sure we study the behavior in the, the response in the model to make sure it matches the expected behavior in reality. And it's not something you can just do once and get it right. I feel like, you know, unless there's some, some really good guidelines, I believe I personally will have to try out these value, these parameter value in the control cards to make sure I'm getting the response that makes sense. Okay, that is the video. Hopefully it helps. Thank you very much.